March 21st, 2018 enters a brand new unique simulator game. The mechanics of this game are quite simple. Players are forced to collect pollen, convert that pollen into honey, and then use that honey to purchase things to continue to advance. The map was large yet small enough to where a player could see everything around them. This would pique a player's curiosity, giving them that incentive to continue to play and advance and unlock the gates and zones that they would see in the distance, and eventually they would work their way up to the mountain. While a player worked on obtaining better gear like backpacks and tools, quests would also be completed to gain extra honey and progress the story. With the positive reception on release, Onnit begins to continue working on the game. Two weeks later, on April 10th, 2018, new Blackbird quests come in, which end up rewarding a diamond egg on completion, along with hive expansions and the introduction of hats for beekeepers. Very fancy. 17 days later, on April 27th, the second update drops, introducing four new bees and a new event bear, this being the sun bear. Sun bear brings in new shoulder guards, as well as belt bags, which help increase a player's stats, allowing them to generate even more honey. A new currency other than honey is introduced, this being tickets, along with the ticket tent shop. Field boosters also make their debut here, giving the player's ability to boost up random fields and farm that field for extra honey for a temporary period of time. This foreshadows the future of boosting that would begin to arrive much later. A fun little royal jelly dispenser is also added, in which players could purchase royal jelly in exchange for tickets. On May 7th, we have a semi-built-in autoclick feature in which players could hold down their mouse instead of spam clicking. This helped out players that grinded the game for long periods of time from massive hand fatigue issues. Other quality of life features were also included. Five days later on May 12th, Tabby Bee drops as a new event bee alongside the introduction of badges. A double chance ticket game pass is also introduced, and I do believe players who have purchased this in the past still have access to this perk in some shape or form, but feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. We also have sparkles in this update, and the community originally called these spit, which I found very interesting. The official name sparkles was given by Onnit a bit later. A mysterious green cog was also added to the top of the noob shop, and many didn't know the purpose of this at the time, but it was likely a reference to the cog code and possibly foreshadowing the robo bear, as development for this event actually began earlier than most would realize. On May 26, 2018, the gummy invasion arrives, introducing the mechanic of goo, along with gumdrops, gummy bee, and gummy bear. Goo on flowers allowed players to collect extra honey from it, so gumdrops became quite the luxury. The gummy bee itself was originally only obtainable through completing 15 quests from the gummy bear, and later to be unobtainable for a while. Prior to the update on May 5th, 2019, this bee could also be obtained with 500 tickets, and this was later changed to 2,500 gumdrops. On June 2nd of 2018, we have the arrival of the Crimson and Cobalt duo, two bees that had abilities that could work off each other. Three new collectors are introduced, and new badges are also brought into the fray. On July 11th, the Gifted Bee update drops, along with treats and amulets. Bees can now be gifted, and they provide great hive bonus buffs, giving players incentives to run very mixed hives instead of toothpaste hives. More Gifted Bees also allow them to roll star amulets in the new star hall. This update also gives us the Ant Challenge, which is a new minigame mode that allows a player to obtain an Ant Amulet with certain scores. New NPCs like Mother Bear and Onnit are also introduced, and the Onnit NPC introduces a set of endgame quests for the first time, this being Star Journey. Two months later, on September 10th, the Vicious and Puppy Bee drop. This event also brings in Stingers, a new consumable that can boost your bee's attack for a short period of time. There are also Sprinklers, along with the Badge Bear Shop, where you're able to purchase these Sprinklers. The Day Night Cycle is also introduced in this update, along with Moon Charms and Moon Sprouts. This gives Bee Swarm a proper environment, especially with the ambience on it provides during these cycles. On November 25th, 2018, we are given two new bees, Stubborn and Carpenter, along with new Mark abilities. This update introduces crafting, with so many new craftable items and gear, the notable ones being the endgame masks. Stumpfield is introduced with the snail along with new NPCs like Stickbug, Bucko, and Riley. And if you really think about it, this update set up a lot and changed the game so much and it's my favorite non beesmith update for sure. The map also changes to a fall theme foreshadowing an arrival of beesmith, something that we don't get anymore. And I really like the fall theme because it was really unique and definitely added a really nice homey feeling to the game. On December 19th of 2018, we have yet another new bee. That's like what, 7 bees in one year? This bee is the festive bee, a bee that could give presents to all players in your server. This is also the first time we have a winter theme on the bee swarm map. On Christmas Day, the first ever Honey Day event arrives, giving players double pollen and double conversion rate, and a new item called the festive bean is introduced. This ultimately becomes one of the first game breaking items. 
Due to the fact that Fessa Beans were shareable in this era, players would purchase Fessa Beans on their alts and use this ability to climb the leaderboards. On February 1st of 2019, we have a small update introducing the Honeybee NPC, with its quest scaling over time as well as a conversion rate award after every completion of the quest. Mobs also now drop their rewards as tokens. Fast forward to two months later, we have a nice little mid-game oriented update, with new mid-game backpacks and new items like microconverters and field dice. This is also the update where we've seen some of the greatest amount of balance changes made in the game. I also forgot to mention that this is the year that Beastorm wins two Bloxy awards, a great achievement for the game. On April 17th, Beastorm Simulator joins the 2019 Scramble the Time Egg Hunt event. A fluctuation of new players would arrive to hunt for the flight of the bumblebee egg. We have new items like jelly beans and marshmallow bees. Jelly beans being yet another broken item like the festa bean that would have to be nerfed later down the line. On September 28th, 2019, a new endgame zone and NPC show up, this being the 35B zone with the spirit bear. Two endgame fields allow players to begin to start boosting in these, and people begin generating tons of daily honey. We have the coconut and petal themed gears, with Sunbear returning for this event yet again to provide extra quest lines and rewards. Windy Bee is also added as yet another event bee, which becomes quite the broken bee for a lot of endgame players, especially since it was able to provide white boost, and being the only bee to do so. But getting this bee was quite the challenge, and the insane RNG factor for Bee Swarm definitely started to show. This update also removed the eviction feature so players can't utterly decimate their hives. If you want to quit, the new meta is to basic be your hive. A new tier of amulet, being the Supreme Snail amulet, was introduced, and this is when players start to theorize a possibility of a Supreme Stick Bug amulet, which was welcome but also a dreaded thought with how intense of a grind it could be. Stingers also became something that was easier to farm, as now we have daily bonuses along with gifted rogue variants that could drop more stingers. On December 23rd, 2019, possibly my favorite Beast Swarm event of all time finally arrives. This is the Mythic Bee update, and it comes with cub buddies and ornaments. Ornaments would introduce a unique set of quests to bees miss only, something that could be completed by all players, but they would scale in difficulty. Mythic bees bring in a whole new playstyle to some hive archetypes during this time, and hives begin to develop some drastic changes. The spicy bee in particular is quite broken with its flame oil. We also have mutations which allow hives to pop out a bit more, and provide small bonuses to bees in your hive. An auto jelly system is also added, so players don't have to roll forever for insanely rare bees. Although this bees miss added a lot, it also began to set a deadly precedent for how on it would update the game as time went on. April 6th of 2020, Beastworm joins yet another egg hunt event, the Agents of Egg. Sunbear returns with players seeking the swarming egg of the hive prize. Blackbear now receives a mythic egg as the final reward in its quest line. Chicks are also introduced as a new mob. Mondo chick rewards were very broken during this time. One kill could allow a player to max out their mic and converters, and they dropped many bitter berries, marshmallow bees, even star treats and mythic eggs. The rewards from Mondo would have to be nerfed to prevent players from farming too many of these exclusive items. It was a mob that was meant to be removed after the egg hunt event, but ended up taking permanent residence in the game. This subtitle also gives us the Fuzzy Bee, another mythic bee that allows low tier fields to become useful, and it begins to encourage group play a bit more. Marshmallow Bee receives a 25 limit cap, so this item becomes rare, only obtainable through quests or codes. Crafting can now be sped up, allowing the crafting process to go by much quicker for players who can't stay in the game for long periods of time. On June 6th of 2020, the release of the Supreme Star Emulate gives endgame players something to work for. These passives allow for new and unique playstyles and further bolsters the three color archetype. Boosting begins to evolve drastically thanks to the introduction of this amulet, and players get unique with the combinations that they can produce. Elol, for example, is able to break the game with Guiding Saw, forcing Ana to take action on the passive and the main culprit of this, the Mythic Meteors. Ana is very hands on with the balancing of colors, which each color taking the stage for a period of time until another player comes along and discovers something new. Jumping all the way to November 23rd of 2020, Beastworm receives the Ready Player One event. This was the longest Beastworm had gone without an update up till this point. This event brings in the Digital Bee, but only as an NPC, how most players began to realize that this bee would eventually take a place in the game itself. Moving on to the Beesmas of 2020, on December 25th, this is the start of just pure Beesmas content for the following years and nothing else in between. We are introduced with gingerbread bears and snowflakes, which are consumables that are exclusive to Beesmas only. Snowbear also arrives as a new mob, which allows players to work together to defeat higher level snowbears for better rewards. The typical things from last Beesmas like bee bear and ornaments make their return. The equips are also added, and they give bees extra stats and sometimes even extra abilities. 
Beesmiths of 2021 adds another hefty amount of content. These are mainly endgame oriented, but they do shift the dynamic for mid-game players as well. We get Puff Shrooms and Planners. Puff Shrooms again force players to farm together in large groups to maximize reward gain. Three endgame tools add even more uniqueness and complexity to each color, with playstyles differing drastically, each having different unique strengths and weaknesses. A new buff called Nectar further encourages the use of macroing, as it forces players to stay in the game and grow planters and get the buffs. Two new bees also enter the scene, the buoyant and the precise bee. These new bees, along with the new endgame tools, have completely shifted the dynamic of endgame, as players have different paths that they may now take. Beesmiths of 2022, the biggest feature for endgame yet, this being the RoboBear challenge. Testing for this minigame mode was just as intense as the Supreme Star Amulets years before. This game mode was quite difficult for most players at the start, and it took a decent amount of time out of your day if you want to grind this up. Digital Bee was released in tandem and is currently one of, if not the best bee in the game in terms of its ability. There was meant to be more for part 2, but players only got the Bubble Bee Man quests and the Robo Party Blessing, but nothing more. Past this event, Onnit begins to slow down, mainly just doing bug fixes and fixing major hacking issues that were running rampant in the community. Onnit had officially hit a brick wall in 2023, this being the first Beesmiths to not be released near Christmas time. He had received major backlash, and the community had slowly lost their mind. An announcement on December 27th, 2023 had Onnit go on an absolute rant, with much of the stress coming back out. Anna had announced that future events would be unscheduled and many promises that he made would go unfulfilled. Unfortunately, the negativity from this announcement only made things worse, but he understood and was able to offer up an apology that same day. It is clear that Anna has finally run out of motivation, and that the updates in the future would lack any new features. This didn't stop him from being able to complete the final update that we're going to cover in this video, that being the sticker and trading update. Although not much, Onnit was able to provide some sort of aesthetic for players, allowing them to customize their hives. Trading enabled bee quips and stickers to be traded, and these items began to circulate, with players seeking different things to either complete their stack or gain a bee quip to give them an edge. So it's currently February 21st, 2024 at the time of me editing this, Beastworm's 6 year anniversary I believe, and there still hasn't been any major news on Beastmas. It's been a fun 6 years and the game's definitely evolved a lot, and I know many of you guys probably have a favorite era, something that just oozes nostalgia, but as long as you enjoyed it back then, you can still cherish those memories. And hey, the game's not all that bad, I still enjoy it from time to time even though I don't play it as often. And there's definitely still hope for another update since Honest's been in studio for a bit, so just happy Beastworming and I'll see you guys in the next one.